Hey guys, what's up? Today I'll be testing one of the most uh, technical sounding headphones that I know. Surely one of the most detailed, transparent headphones. One of the widest, one of the deepest, one of the fastest and hard slamming headphones that I know. That, uh, <laughs> interestingly, doesn't need gobs of power to be moved. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be a review for the Hyphaman HE1000 Special Edition. So, let's check them out. Build quality wise, the moment I picked them up, I've realized that Hyperman put a much bigger accent on the build quality this time around. You can find plastics and pleather on Aria, but you won't with HE1000 that uses only metal parts, a nicer and a stronger headband, much deeper and comfier ear pads, and for the first time I see some wooden accents that are adding refinement and class. The metal frame is reminding about the Aria as these two are having the same size and shape. At only 440 grams, or about a pound, I find them lightweight and super comfortable long term. They aren't applying a bigger pressure on top of my head, and the cheek pressure is close to nothing, making them one of the most comfortable planar headphones. The hybrid ear pads with leather on the outside and soft fabric where skin is being touched isn't a novelty anymore, but I really enjoy the added thickness and extra padding that could potentially increase the soundstage size. Interestingly enough, they seem to have one of the deepest ear pads I've seen on Hyphaman headphones, even the mighty Suzvara doesn't have them as thick. It was surprising seeing three headphone cables inside, and I don't remember ever seeing so many of them in a stock packaging. I'm not a huge fan of those cables. The outer jacket and its color are reminding about my student ears, but it's still amazing having a 4-pin XLR balance out cable, a regular quarter inch headphone cable and another 3.5mm cable. The last cable tries to tell me something and who knows, maybe I can drive them with portable devices. As for the tech inside them, we are talking about a huge open back headphone that houses a ginormous planar magnetic driver that is driven by a double magnet structure in a push-pull configuration. The diaphragm has a sub-micron thickness conductor, making it extremely responsive to the powerful magnetic flux. Hyphaman designed some acoustically invisible stealth magnets that are reducing the wave diffraction turbulence. The result? A lower total harmonic distortion that leads to a more transparent sound. They have a lower impedance of 35 ohms and a higher sensitivity of 96 dB per 1 milliwatt of power, and I'm really curious how they would perform with desktop and portable gear alike. So, what are we waiting for? Let's hit some eardrums! As for sound performance, coming from a pair of Hyphaman Aria that I'm using for about 2 years now to this pair, uh, I was really not prepared for such a huge jump of, uh, in terms of technicalities, in terms of everything really. The amount of detail of retrieval that came forward was just mind-blowing to say the least, uh, soundstage improved considerably, and as much as I'm loving the Erzetic Phobos for their super wide uh, sound, I think that they were beaten at their own game, because HE1000 just sounded more layered, more holographic, uh, they had a more natural rendition of the soundstage. Uh, very impressive with this department, that is for sure. For many, many years I've considered the Odyssey LCD4 as the depth king, uh, because they can easily show me the distance between uh, all musical notes and myself and while that still is happening and they are very impressive in this department again I think that the latest Hyphaman creation were just uh, deeper sounding, uh, more holographic sounding, more 3D they had a more uh, exact pinpoint location of all the notes uh, around myself and that was absolutely amazing to experience from a relaxing sounding area that lacked the ultimate fun factor, uh, Hyphaman just created a higher tiered headphone that sounds a lot more technical and while seriously boosting its uh, engagement factor. With a lot of sadness, it seems that my old champions of the past, um, Kenerton Odan, uh, Odyssey LCD4 and Erzetic Phobos were beaten uh, when it comes to detail retrieval, when it comes to transparency, when it comes to depth information, when it comes to soundstage. 
as HE1000SE is just crowned itself as the most technical headphone that I've reviewed so far. If you think that Sennheiser HD 800 are detailed sounding, wait until you experience the sound of HE1000 or Suzvara, it is something else entirely. Moving on to the power requirements, as you all know, all Hyperman headphones aren't that easy to drive, with very few exceptions like Diva, like Ananda, and that is basically the sole reason why uh, Hyperman Aria would never hop in my backpack, because I needed some additional electronics to make them sing, like a portable headphone amplifier or a very powerful uh, portable digital audio player. Surprisingly, HM1000 is much, much, much easier to drive. At 96 dB per 1 mAh, power, there is a loudness gain factor of 1.5 compared to the Aria, meaning that HM1000 will sound by 1.5 times louder to the Aria at the same power coming from your amplifier. To have them at the same volume, uh, HM1000 will need 2 times less uh, voltage gain and 4 times less power gain. This is a huge deal and a very very positive change, since HE1000 can be now driven even by entry-level DAC amps, by uh, portable audio players, and this is why I'll be carrying the HE1000 with me from in my future trips. So entry-level DAC amps and also uh, Bluetooth gizmos, uh, USB-C dongles like uh, Shining UP2, uh, Audio Quest Dragonfly, had enough headroom with my Punch Electronica. And I think that one of the most uh, nicest pairing I've had was with the AudioBite Hydravox that sounded absolutely amazing. And this is how I've listened to them most of the time. It's warmer tonality and easygoing nature worked as yin to the HE1000's yang, complementing each other's folds while making sweet love with my ears. As for transit response, my favorite part, what was very clear from the start is that it almost reaches electrostatic like speed and decay. It's extremely fast sounding with the shortest decays I've experienced. Uh, and also it's a very punchy, very hard slamming uh, headphone, unlike electrostatic headphones that aren't that impressive in this department. I'm happy to tell that Hyperman solved the biggest shortcomings of all Hyperman headphones. Finally, there is slam in the bass. Finally, there is weight in the bass. Finally, my ears started flapping in the air like butterfly wings and I could easier listen to all the fastest tunes, to my electronic tracks, rock and metal, no problem. They worked amazingly well with uh, those musical genres. The difference between a liquid and a smooth sounding source to a super fast and super snappy sounding source became even bigger, so much so that I'll be replacing the Odyssey LCD4 with the uh, HE1000 in my future DAC reviews in my future amplifier reviews, because it's just a more technical sounding headphone, the most uh, more detailed and a faster sounding headphone. From a bigger collection of high-end headphones, I think that only Odyssey LCD4 can stand a chance versus the HE1000, because anything else didn't reach the same uh, speed and impact, not even close. However, there is one and only headphone that can surpass both units at their own game, and that is the Haifaman Sosvara, being driven by a fully discrete Class A power amplifier. In terms of soundstage, Haifaman used a thinner diaphragm in this model, more powerful magnets, and the same window shade system that you can see right here, and that can only translate into a bigger overall sound, a bigger picture that is more precise, that is clearer sounding. From my headphone collection, there isn't a headphone that can surpass them in here in the soundstage department. There is one that sounds on the same level, that is Hyperman Suzvara, but only when it's driven by a very powerful power amplifier. Uh, everything else, including uh, RZH Phobos and um, Odyssey LCD4, weren't decompressing my music so easily and so gracefully. So yeah, I think that AG, AG1000 is just more impressive in terms of soundstage size and depth. They reminded me a little about the sound of the Sennheiser HD800, but without their obvious flaws and shortcomings. Also, better recorded acoustic music sounded just scary real, and the tiniest air movements in the room uh, wasn't hiding in the shadows anymore, and that was very pleasing to experience. The left to right play on uh, Live in Japan by Rodrigo y Gabriela reminded me a lot about the sound of my loudspeaker setup, because I could easily pinpoint the location of all the notes in the room. And some sounds even came from behind my back, uh, 
creating an impression that I'm listening to binaural music and not to some ordinary live recorded stereo album. An expanded sound stage on all axes always plays tricks on me and I believe that it will have the same effect on you. As for detail and retrieval, if I would never listen to the Haifaman Suzvara, then I will tell you right away that Haifaman HE1000 Special Edition is the most detailed, the most transparent sounding headphone that I've tried. With a lot of sadness, it seems that uh, all these LCD4, RZH4 Boss, uh, Kenneton Wodan, Forstex TH909, uh, Mesa Imperium were just outperformed with no rights to appeal. I will not blame anyone, but those that are telling you that HE1000 is just a redesigned ARIA with the same acoustic properties should just go and check their ears or maybe upgrade their acoustic chain because the gap between it and the ARIA is much much bigger and it's much smaller between it and the Haifman Suzvara. Will you hear additional micro details and small nuances in your tracks uh, compared to all those set headphones? Yes, a lot of them, too many of them. They will just um, show you an absurd quantity of micro detail, uh, so much so that with some less than perfect recordings, I just wanted them to stop showing up uninvited in my tracks. And that is precisely why I was ditching those uh, THX and NFC amplifiers in favor of some less revealing amplifiers that could improve their tonality and make them easier to listen to in long listening sessions. Okay guys, so moving on to the frequency response, HE1000 has an amazing sub bass performance and a very high engagement factor. So I, I felt all the bass quantity that I wished for in a very clean, undistorted way. I could never get enough of it with my electronica music. So you'll easily hear those uh, 20 Hz notes loud and clear. Uh, its mid bass performance was exactly as impactful and hard slamming. And I wish that all my other planar headphones would sound so amazing in the bass. It was never lightweight or ethereal sounding in here. On the contrary, they punched and slammed very impressively. There is an unspoken rule that all Haifaman headphones aren't that impressive in the mid-range department. And if you mean elevated, very warm, very smooth, up close and personal mid-range, then yes, uh, all Haifaman headphones aren't exactly like that. Uh, they will not boost the mid-range presence, how some other uh, top-tier headphones would do, but they will never render it less impressive to the rest of the frequency response, so that is very important to say. I cannot blame a headphone that has a straight-as-a-line headphone that is very present in Matthews when it's called for. I can blame a headphone that has a missing uh, mid-range that has it recessed, but that is not really the case with today's headphone. Its treble performance can be described as uh, super clean, super detailed, very extended even past top octave. I feel that it offers a higher presence here in treble compared to some other Haifaman headphones. Uh, it's a higher presence compared to Aria and Suzvara, and that might pose a slight, a very minor issue long term. So the most sensitive part of our hearing uh, is boosted by around 2.5 dB. And that makes a few particular sounds appear as just sharper, so just more contoured, a little bit more detailed. You can certainly tame its light brightness by slashing 3 dB, somewhere around 7 and 10 kHz. And if you'd like to have a smoother top end, a calmer top end, just slash another 2 dB, or use some warmer sounding audio equipment. I have also measured their performance using a mini DSP ear system, so everything from frequency response, total harmonic distortion, spectral decay, waterfall and spectrogram. But since I don't like long and boring reviews, I strongly recommend checking out my measurement analysis in the written review that I've put below. You'll also find a must read comparison with the Odyssey LCD4, which I find super duper interesting. So please check all that goodness below, it's worth your time. As for the conclusion, I know that Haifaman Suzvara is one of the cleanest, if not really the cleanest and the most detailed and the most transparent headphone out there, but I wasn't prepared for such a remarkable look-alike at almost uh, half the price actually. So HE1000 SE uh, felt like a mini Suzvara in some ways, and in other ways it felt like a better headphone because I could drive it with pretty much anything with any headphone amplifier. The most shocking part is that uh, the technicalities went neck and neck, so they sounded exactly as fast, as nimble, 
uh, hard slamming in the bass and uber transparent to a point of becoming too clean sounding with some particular tunes. And I know that 3500 bucks is a lot of cash, but knowing that not a single headphone from my collection can outperform them, I think they are worth it and my highest golden award. Ok guys, my full in-depth review can be found on my website, in case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and as usual, listen to my music, be positive, I'll see you next time, cheers, bye bye!